Drivers in the AA.com British Touring Car Championship are enjoying some Scottish hospitality. But as we've seen already this year, it isn't always that hospitable on the track. I don't know what they were thinking when they built Knock Hill way up here in the Scottish Hills, but I tell you what, they sure had an eye for a view. This is the only circuit I've ever been to where your ears pop on the way to the track. Now, three things are a given here. Number one, touring cars at Knock Hill always attract a huge enthusiastic crowd. Two, well, the racing is fast and furious and the drivers have to be aggressive. And three, it will rain at some time during the day. Lovely countryside around Knock Hill, just a half an hour up the road from Edinburgh. And as you can see, a very short, tight and demanding circuit. If this was skiing, Knock Hill would be a black mogul run. It is by any doubt the wildest, most undulating circuit in all of Britain. A whole host of very challenging but very exciting corners. This is the first one, Duffer Stip. The drivers arrive here going downhill, they club this curb I'm standing on and unbelievably they keep going downhill and have to hook it into a tight left-hander. It's a real fine line between, you know, getting it right and, and having a big moment. From there, they've got to gather it up in time for this really tight right-hander, McIntyre's. And remember, at this point, we're still going downhill. It's a corner where you can lose a hell of a lot of time. Get a load of this. This is what they call the chicane. It's not a corner, it's more like a ski jump. And this is a fabulous view of just what the drivers can't see when they approach it. The car jump everywhere. You can see just the, 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 the sky. And this is Clark Corner, once again almost blind, but super important for your speed down the back straight. It's actually quite hard because it's coming uphill slightly to it. And this is the sting in the tail, Taylor's hairpin. Super tight and it's also uphill, so you have to get it right, because after this is the drag uphill to the finish line. It's possible to see three car side to side on this corner now, I think. Because of the unique nature of this circuit, the cars require a very particular suspension setup. They have to run softer springs so that when the cars go over the high curbs here, they don't literally get launched. As well as that, they use heavier shock absorbers, more damping, to actually steady the wheel travel of the car up and down. Now, how all this translates into a lap, Jason Plato shows us. So here we are at Knock Hill. We're going to have a look at my quali qualifying lap, which put me on pole. Right, we're coming up over this start finish line to start the lap. This first corner is very difficult. It starts the lap, it's crucial. If you don't get this one right, the whole lap just doesn't flow. Got to be nice and smooth. This corner is tight, second gear. Got to be slow in and get the power on early and not scrub any speed off on the exit because we've got a downhill over the curves into the famous chicane where we're going to have two wheels, land again, and try not to use too much curb on the exit. Clark, this next corner is a right-hander, third gear crucial because of the long straight, but you've got to use every bit of road, well in fact and a little bit more on the exit, uh, down for the long straight back into the hairpin again. It's very easy here to make a little mistake, you're going a little bit hard, and in fact on this lap I think I remember I missed my apex by about a uh, foot, yeah, in fact I do, but it looks like it's still good, that's where the gear's nice and, gent and gentle, and there we go, oh, looks easy but um, it wasn't. A new face in the Lexus team this weekend. Kurt Luby is being replaced by his teammate. Well, my name is Thomas Erdos. I'm from Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. I came to England first in 1987 and did a um, school, well, racing school, uh, with the Jim Russell Racing School, and started racing really in 1988 in single seaters. Uh, went on to uh, compete in Formula Renault and won the British Formula Renault Championship. I uh, moved on from there into a sports car. Uh, just couldn't quite bring the, uh, the sponsorship necessary to take me to the uh, Formula One path. So I uh, had opportunities in sports cars, in GT racing. Did that for a while and um, obviously came up uh, this opportunity for 
for the ABG Motorsport uh, Nexus uh, seat. Well, Vauxhall's front row again in qualifying. But absolute jubilation for Jason Plato and his team. Two pole positions. Great stuff. We took a bit of a gamble in the second session that we sacrificed the first 10 minutes of it to make some changes to the car and that worked. So, yeah, it's good. You know, we're back. You know, everyone was saying, ooh, Ivan's up the road, Ivan's up the road. How things change, eh? Now, here's the turn up for the books. A local bloke, he's an instructor here, but he's not raced in the championship before and he's stuck it on pole. That's his name, Gordon Shedden. Gordon Shedden, congratulations. Thank you very much. First race of the season and you get pole. Yeah, it's the first time I've been in a race car for seven months and uh, first time out in the, the BTC production car this year. So, yeah, I'm absolutely ecstatic, obviously. A little bit of local knowledge has helped me with the circuit, but there, there's no substitute for actual time in the car. So I'm really delighted for, for GR Motorsport to have put together such a good car that's enabled me to get pole position today. Well, he might have had a great qualifying, but Dan Eves sure didn't. The big fire in Dan Eves' Peugeot near the end of qualifying. Fortunately repairable. But a huge job for those mechanics. Had to pull the car apart, get all that foam out from underneath it, all their extinguisher foam. Massive amount of work, but it's always hard yakka for these teams. They put in so much work because they all want the same thing. That championship trophy on the mantelpiece at the end of the year. 143 points is a long way to go in the championship, and my car's getting better. I've got 144 points. We're approaching the midway to the season. I need two good races at Knock Hill today. I'm on pole, so that should be good. And uh, it's a long way to go and a lot to play for, but this wallpaper's not very good, is it? I have 164 points, six wins, but I still uh, keep to win. Well, it's tight at the top of the championship. It's also tight at the front of this grid. Our tour guide for the day, Jason Plato, on pole position, but very close, his teammate, Ivan Muller. Nothing either in the next pair of Vauxhalls, Bill Bennett and James Thompson. Now, we've had a very encouraging qualifier this weekend from Tommy Erdos in the Lexus, who's just making his way up the grid now. Very, very, very much improved performance. Here he comes now. Just let him slide past us. Up under... Up onto the third row of the grid. Really good stuff for him. Now also some fabulous news. Dan Eves in the Peugeot, he's actually made it out. The guys worked till two o'clock this morning sorting this car out and job done. Now in the production ranks, watch out for this guy here, Gordon Shedden. Local boy, bit of a hero. First time out in the championship and he's only banged it on pole. Now quick reminder on the rules, this is the sprint race. Touring guys take off first, these guys 10 seconds later. And of course, the touring guys have to do one extra lap. Told you it was close at the top. Jason Plato out in front, but then Muller, Thompson and Bennett all on the same tenth of a second. Extremely close. What a great qualify there for Tommy Erdos in fifth position. Dan Eves didn't get a time because of his qualifying problems. Shedden up there in pole, as we said. Then Kay, Harrison, Moen and Graves. Always the four of those so close together. Colin Blair, a bit of a local hero up here. Tenth position, running down through to Tom Boardman in 13th. Beaumont, Alan Templeton and then Clark on the next row. Our leaders perched up on the crest of the hill. Plato on the left and Muller on the right. Down the hill are the production boys. Jason Plato getting ready. There's James Thompson. Tourists start on the lights. Green off they go. Muller on the right. Great start. I think he might have just hauled in front of Plato as he side by side down the hill. Soper darting around in the back of the field. And yeah, Muller is through. Past Plato. Thompson right behind. Then Bennett. Down through Duffus for the first time. Getting ready for McIntyre's. Clubbing over those curves, great start for Muller. Well, Muller certainly did a very good job on the start. Plato lost that pole position and losing that around Knock Hill is a huge disadvantage. Yeah, it's all ahead of him now and he's really trying to get it back. Coming up into Clark Curve, look at that, Muller faints. Plato just trying to get down the inside. Muller's got that covered through Clark and then down the back straight for the first time. I think that was Soper running a little bit wide there. Couple of wheels up on the grass coming down into the hairpin for the first time. Now this is the Thompson's eye view. That's Plato and Muller is just ahead of us. Puff of smoke. This hill here though is so steep now. And it's so important here in Knock Hill to get good traction out of the heaven bend because you pass at the end of this straight into Duffers. Now here are the production boys. Ahead of us James Kay, race leader. <laughs> Absolute tank slapper from James Kay. Save of the day, but it's cost him the place. It certainly did, but that's what happened. Happens. 
start of a race, cold rear tyres, you could be in big trouble. Ain't over yet, here's more action, Tom Budman, Colin Blair, side by side, bit of contact, they've got to turn right, he's turned him inwards, this is Blair home circuit, and Blair's off, welcome home matey. In fairness to Borman, he didn't have much room to work with, but it's a new car for Borman to hit, this time it's Colin Blair. OK, well, red meets pink, here's red on red, it's Muller and Plato, and already they've got a little bit of a gap over the rest of the field, Tommy Erdos there in the Lexus, having a battle all of his own there with Dan Eves in the Peugeot, Eves trying to find a way past. Now, what can Plato do? Down into the hairpin again, Muller's had to cover, he's really determined. Plato's been strong all weekend and qualifying in practice, and he wants to reassert that authority. Yeah, well, it was such a cracking start from Muller, he's got a banker, but he's coming under some really big pressure. That's a defensive line, meantime, we've got a spinner there, that's Allen. Round and round, which way am I facing? Well, and maybe another car, cold rear tyres, so easy here in Knockhill. You load the back of the car up, then you're in trouble. That's easy for Ivan Muller. He's only got two tyres on the ground at any one point, as we can see. Absolutely lurid stuff from him. Working down the hill, still downhill, still downhill now. Look at this. Up and over that chicane. Makes you feel sick to think about it. James Thompson clipping one of those markers. Everybody else airborne on the way past. And even Bennett got it completely sideways going through the chicane. Up through Clark, very sideways. James Thompson, talk about maxo commitment. Well, that's what Knock Hill is about. It is about 100% commitment. OK, now here's James Thompson again on board. There are more of those floppies dead ahead. It's a strike! I bet he's good at 10-pin bowling. I think that was a question of... He had to do it. He didn't have a choice. The car was out of shape. That was the expedient answer. Oh, yeah, 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 sure. I think you're being very kind to him. Now, Jason Plato sideways, trying to get past Ivan Muller. Really committed under brakes. I thought he had that there for a minute. He got a good run into Duffus, but Muller was just enough in front. Are there any questions? Jason Plato has to regroup. Let's try that again. Up and over the chicane. Leap bounce. Still a couple of those left. And look at Ivan Muller. Sideways stuff. Absolutely beautiful to watch. Torval and Dean would be jealous. But I think it's cost him the place. Yeah, Plato through. Plato saw it. He had the advantage. He had the momentum. He got the lead. Brilliant stuff. It was a hot save there from Ivan Muller. That was awesome stuff. But I guess just too much speed. Too much speed. Again, the rear tower's cool. But watch James Thompson. He's watching all this. Trying to get into the action. I'll have a bit of that, he says. Banging panels side by side. Muller and Thompson up the hill together. Muller moves to the right to try to cover. Has he just got a nose in front? Now, here's another look from Plato ahead of us, Muller. Here's that slide. So coming up through the chicane, over the curb, he reads that look at Muller, car sideways. Plato gets out, has the advantage and speed enough to take the lead into Clark. Uh, I know it cost him the place, but it was beautiful to watch. Now, down through the bottom part of the circuit again. Down yet another dip through Butchers, then up and over that chicane once again. Bill Bennett is really committed there, big time. OK, now here's the battle for production, and indeed the race lead so far, and local boy Shedden, he's out in front. James Kay still in touch in second place, but Shedden's got a little bit of a lead in that focus. He's very strong here at Knock Hill, of course. He is a circuit instructor, but nonetheless, first time in a production touring car leading. That's pretty good. Now, Jason Plato looks as though, speaking of pretty good, he's getting himself, in touring car terms, a little bit of a lead up. I think Peter's got an advantage here all weekend. He's got his car set up well. He's able to use it. His car looks much better over the curbs, not as wild as Muller. That's because he's got his eyes shut, leaping over them. Now, speaking of your eyes shut, here's James Thompson, eyes wide open. Great view of him at work. Real concentration. Quick check in the mirrors because Bennett isn't far behind. Now here are the production boys there, Shedden, followed by Kay and Graves, then Harrison. Then here are the two Ford Focuses leaping over them. <laughs> Gavin Piper very sideways there. And that's Jackson in one of the Focuses running wide. Hal gets through. Yes, see, that, that was pretty wild stuff. It certainly was a private battle of these two Focuses, but it is a Focus needing these cars right now. Well, he lost his Focus there a bit. That old joke, I shouldn't do that. Oh, smokescreen, who's that? That's one of the Peugeot 306 productions. Annie Templeton. And big fire there as well. Well, as they say, you can't stand the heat, get out of the kitchen. Quickly, Annie, you're on fire. Must have blown an oil line or something like that. But she's obviously out OK in time. Jason Plato, touring leader, Muller behind him, still James Thompson. Now, Steve Soper is giving Phil Bennett an absolute workout over Clark. Down the back straight, Bennett trying to recover there. Weaving a little bit to cover the line. Soper's really got a run on him, coming down into the hairpin bend. Now, it moves to cover onto the left-hand side. Sober's taking a wide line. 
Cuts back, Bennett stands on the gas, up the hill, bang, contact! And they have both of What was that all about? Well, very simply, Bennett was trying to defend not just into the corner, but out of the corner. Lost it, Nick! Bonkers! Well, that was Ian Harrison from Vauxhall in no uncertain terms telling Vic Leaf and the Peugeot team, your guy's fault. What do you reckon, Waddy? Well, first of all, I think if the camera hadn't been there, he'd been a little bit stronger in his comment. But watch, Bennett out on the left. Super gets to run up the inside. Bennett then cuts across to stop Super. Super, of course, on full power and accelerating quicker than Bennett. Well, whatever the rights and wrongs of it, Soap is the loser because he is out of the race. And now back in the race, there's Muller, the second place man. James Thompson still very much in touch with him. And Jason Plato still ahead of them in the touring car battle. Around that hairpin, where just a lap ago, we saw Soper and Bennett come to grief. Now here's our race leader and production leader as well, Gordon Shedden, getting a handy lead in that focus. Yes, the other three, these two Hondas and the Peugeot, are battling amongst themselves, allowing Shedden to pull away. Clean air, no traffic, dead easy. And it's as close as you like between these three. That's James Kay, Graves right behind him, Simon Graves, and then Harrison trying to find a way around through the hairpin. Graves tries to get a toe up the hill from his teammate. Interesting comparison horsepower there with Harrison. He seems to have plenty of squirt in that Peugeot. Again, it's all about traction as well as squirt. But again, the two down the street, not enough to bring the Peugeot to the back of those two Hondas. Well, here's more colour and movement. It's Edwards, Collard and Boardman. Wouldn't you know it? Three of them just banging into each other like castanets up the hill. Boardman in the toe now. Followed by O'Neill over the crest of the hill. Here's the battle again. The clear in front. Now, Tom Boardman, more pink problems, lunges to the inside, can he get through? Tough pass, a little bit of a tap, that's gutsy stuff. Yeah, that was a brave pass, he went down the inside late in the brakes, kept it under control, good move, Tom. Now, Collard and Boardman, uh, we've seen them play many times before, let's hope they stay well enough away from each other as the race continues. Boardman, very active indeed across that curve, too active indeed, running a wide line. I think he was just saying, well done, Tom, I've made a good pass, he forgot he had a corner coming up. Well, speaking of a corner coming up, here's Graves, he's got one, and Harrison as well with Kay, gives Kay the hip and shoulder out of the hairpin. And Kay has lost time, in. oh my, he must have missed a gear, he suddenly stopped going forward, and the lead Honda and Peugeot, just look how much they've pulled away. Mr. gear in about three layers of paint as well, down the hill again, into Duffer's dip, two wheels there for Graves, into the left-hander, then hooks in tight to the right. Harrison was complaining before this race, he thinks these Hondas are good around here because they turn in so well, but uh, that Peugeot looks like it's hanging on pretty well. Now here's a Muller's eye view passing Tom Boardman. And look, the horsepower differential, isn't that dramatic? Horsepower isn't big, but the difference is in aerodynamics. The production cars have got little downforce. Well, how long do you reckon aerodynamic aids would last on Tom Boardman's car? In fairness, Wattie. Now, on board with Jason Plato, clubbing those curbs ahead of us is Rob Callard. Now, remember the production guys have got one lap less to do, so really, Plato is actually battling for position here as he pulls past Collard now and picks up another spot. Big lock-up, that's Dan Eves! That was quite a hard hit. Straight into the wall there at Duffus. Yes, he just came down the straight, got it all locked up, and uh, no steering, straight into the tire barrier. On board, let's have a listen. Well, apart from the noise of metal and rubber, it sounds to me like he might have lost a gear somewhere. I'm out of locked up, I'm in the tyres. You ain't kidding, Sunshine. And remember, on top of that, the boys worked so hard to fix that car last night, up till 2 o'clock this morning to sort it out from a fire yesterday, so he'll be popular when he gets back to the pits. They say things happen in threes. That was the second of them this weekend for Dan Eves. I'll keep my head down in that case. Jason Plato getting a handy lead in this touring race. On board now with Tommy Erdos and the Lexus. Ah, who's that? That's O'Neill. O'Neill running very wide, heaving rocks and gravel up onto the circuit. Where are you? Stay where you are, Paul. Easy, Tiger. That, was, that could have been ugly. I think Argus was very wise. He didn't know what O'Neill was going to do. He waited, he got past, and he's on his way. Don't worry, O'Neill didn't know what he was going to do either. Now Thompson trying to get past Moen, and he's tapped him. Very unfortunate there, just coming through Clark. Thompson just catching the end of him. Now, here's another look. Yeah, Thompson gets up to the inside. Moen really not in a position to give way. Closes the door. Thompson, now he just accelerates, spins Moen round. That's a bit cruel, but probably was the safest thing to do in the circumstances. Not a driving tactic, it was a cannon. Now, there's Jackson. 
forward focus. Remember, he went off a couple of laps earlier. That must be related. Yeah, and there's also an awful lot of right-hand lock in that right-hand front wheel. There is some right-hand lock as well, because this is the battle for the lead. It's Graves down the inside, Shedden in the focus on the outside, and he's got him. That shows you what happens when you get it clear of other cars. You can run at your own speed. Graves has been able to do it and get up to behind Shedden. Yeah, he's just worked away now. Shedden doesn't want to give up. We're on board with him now in the focus, coming down to Duffer's dip. There's Dan Eve, stranded car over to the left. Graves cocks a couple of wheels up there, very forceful through there. Now he's moving to cover as we turn into McIntyre's. Holds the inside line, but that's going to help uh, Shedden a little bit because he'll be able to carry some more momentum. Down towards the chicane again and over the top. Real commitment, he's hunting him. Yeah, and also the focus looks better over the curbs than the Honda does. Past Jackson, stranded car as well, through Clark. Real commitment from both of these guys, running very wide. Shedden's going to run out of laps, and Graves looks as though he's got the just the legs a bit down that back straight. I think it's the same thing as before, that old mumba from the Honda, just enough to keep it ahead. Well, he'll need it going back up the hill, because this could be his salvation. There's Simon Harrison in third place, then Kay in fourth. Here's the first of your tour, is a great big lock-up to let us know he's arrived. Jason Plato in the box hall. Muller still in touch. Now, here's the outright lead and the production lead all in one. Still hanging on to it is Graves. There's Harrison in third, Kay in fourth, then it's Plato. Headlights ablaze in that red and white Vauxhall. Down through this complex weave of corners. Left, right, left, downhill, more downhill. Nice driving there from James Kay. Gives enough room to let Plato through. That's good stuff. Really leaping over the curve in that focus. Oh, look, I mean, you've got Plato looking ahead at Harrison. The Persia's all over the place. Brilliant stuff, action of plenty. Carrying a lot of speed through here is important. This is Clark Harrison is not giving Jason Plato a poofteenth more room than he has to. Just moves over at the end. Plato's got the momentum down the back straight, of course, and is in the quicker car. Here's the battle for the lead still. Graves, Shedden hanging on. There's Plato in third. Muller in fourth, just tucking inside of Harrison. Standing on the gas for the run up the hill. Last lap, and I don't think Shedden's in a great position to do it. And meantime, Plato, of course, is trying to pick up track position. He's just bearing down on the Ford Focus. Well, that's a clunky old gear change I've ever heard. One do these guys not know how to change gear, even in this part of the season? Very, very forceful indeed. In fact, you wouldn't want to be a transmission on any of these cars, would you, on a circuit like this? Very tough on the machinery. I mean, Shedden through that chicane, had one wheel on the ground, all three others up in the air, all shapes. OK, he's tough on the gearbox, but he's very easy on the tyres. They're hardly ever on the road. Down the back straight for the last time. Here's Plato. What can he do? He's got two production cars ahead of him. He's bearing down on Shedden. Surely he'll pick up... Yeah, he must pick up that spot into the... No, he hasn't. Shedden's still got him holding off. Just hold the inside line. Should be able to drag him off up to the hill. Meantime, Graves in the lead, and Graves is going to take this. Yep, great win for Simon Graves. Thanks a lot, guys. What a piece of entertainment. That was fabulous racing and not easy for anybody. Graves had to club his way past Shedden. And also, Jason Plato had to fight back so hard, having lost that lead at the start from Ivan Muller, who got a cracking opening lap. Plato and Muller just congratulating each other at the race end. No, you couldn't get a more shuffled pack than that, could you? Graves in a production car, then Plato touring, Shedden production, and Muller touring. Doesn't get much better than that. And what about that scrap between Harrison and Kay? Race long dice, great result. I was hanging, up, hanging back behind my teammate for the first few laps just to see how things panned out, but um, he's obviously he's carrying a little bit more weight than me, so eventually I had to go past him, and um, I didn't really want... Um, uh, Shedden to get away too far because um, I felt I could catch him, but if he had too much for a lead, it would have been a bit of a problem. I managed to get past the van, uh, four forced me into an error, but I mean, I knew I had the pace. I think the van knew I had the pace. So it was just a case of getting past the van. Cheers, Jimmy. Follow me. Well, we've been here before this weekend. The front of Dan Eve's car absolutely in pieces this time after that off in race one. But it's not the only damage, Peugeot. Sopa's cars are wiped out as well, and he's not happy. He chopped me over, just came straight across in front of me. So there's nowhere to go. I mean, if I wanted to push him off, I'd push him off going in. I wouldn't yeah, try and push him off coming out. out. To be fair to Steve, uh, I, had a, I got held up massively in the chicane, and it meant I had to defend my position a little bit more strongly than uh, you know, perhaps I would normally do. But the upshot of it all is he just sort of hit the back of the car, stayed on the throttle and just took me off the circuit. As I got alongside him, he just changed from the outside of the circuit 
which is where we ended up going into the corner to the inside of the circuit and basically drove me off the circuit. So, you know, if he wants to immediately close the gate after the corner, he's got to at least look in his mirror and make sure there's not someone there. The point is, you know, I've been to Donington, now I've come here, two races, twice he's taken me out of the race. Maybe it's time he retired. Well, this championship's starting to get a bit gritty. How do you call it, Oracle? Well, I think Phil Bennett thinks he's Eddie Irvine. But look, Super Dick's a very wide line, cuts back. Now, what Bennett didn't appreciate was the speed Super's accelerating. He tries to block Super. The consequence is he takes Super out. Don't feel under any pressure, Derek. They're a competitive lot, these guys. The day before qualifying, the drivers grabbed their drivers to take on the team managers for a round at Glen Eagles. James, we uh, saw you at Glen Eagles earlier. Tell me who won. Well, it's fair to say that we lost in comprehensive fashion, but there was a fair bit of uh, underhand antics going on. I mean, uh, I'm sure... Uh, Old Colin Montgomery doesn't have to put up with the the heckling in the in the background that we did. Um, so yeah, it was nice. I organised it, and um, you know we we went up there, and it was we had a really good fun day. Anyone see that? You've had two big accidents in your career. In Ninety-five here at Knock Hill. A few more than two. <laughs> big ones. <laughs> yeah. Two big ones. Yeah. Ninety-five here at Knock Hill, and one in two thousand at Brands Hatch. So Alan Menu, the leader was just in front of me after the pit stops. And uh, I noticed that Alain had backed off quite significantly for this corner. And I thought, well, my chance to really um, to, to pull some time back on him is if I can commit myself, you know, full style. And uh, unfortunately, it bit me badly. And um, we ended up uh, reversing into the barrier at uh, about just over 100 mile an hour. So. It was quite a, quite, a, quite a big one and snapped the, snapped the seat and all sorts of things. You find yourself in a position now where your only serious rivals are also your teammates. How does that work? It is, it, it, it's exciting, but it depends how you deal with it. You know, what you've got to remember is if, if, you take somebody, if you take somebody off now, it's going to be your teammate, and he's in the same bus as you. And it's not like before. If you took somebody off who was, who was in the Volvo camp, you'd go and hide in, in your bus you know, and lock the door. Nowadays, there's nowhere to hide because they're all in the same bus. Obviously, there's a, the pressure builds through the year, and uh, if it does keep going like it is doing now and it becomes everybody's getting closer particularly now we've made my car a little bit better um, you know we're all much closer you know I'm sure there's going to be a few fireworks if you've ever wondered how we get some of those amazing on-car action shots well here's one of the cameras to have a look at this is hanging off the rear wing of Tommy Erdos's Lexus and it's not a bad camera to think about because it might just give us a bird's eye view of the resumed grudge match if you like between these two guys Steve Soper here in the Peugeot and the man dead ahead of him Phil Bennett in the Vauxhall now remember in those race one shenanigans they both took each other out both drivers have been taken aside by the stewards and told cool it so let's hope that cool heads prevail now right at at the front of the grid, Jason Plato once again in pole position, but he's got his teammate Ivan Muller alongside, and Ivan will be desperate to prove a point, because in race one, as we saw, he got ahead, then he lost the place, so he will not want that to happen again. Now remember, this is the feature race, so it's a pit stop race. First time we've had pit stops here at Knock Hill for the full feature race, and just as a footnote, remember Dan Eves stuffed his car into the wall down there after the mechanics had worked all night to fix it, so as penance, look out for Dan Eves, they're making him be the pit crew for Steve So. Safety car leading the field around because this is a rolling start and if you're wondering why it's going so quickly the safety car this weekend is being driven by special guest Anthony Reid who is probably enjoying leading the field Yes, and he's stayed on the track so far this afternoon well, I'm sure the next time we see Anthony on track, it won't be so sedate because he's joining the championship later on this year, of course, driving the MG touring car. He's getting his eye in first. Safety car lights are off. That means that when he goes around this bend, he will pull off the track 
and the field will commence the rolling start. Everyone starting together here. Touring cars and production cars, one screaming horde, all heading over the crest of the hill and down into Duffus for the first time. Safety car will peel off to the right any second. Off he goes. Cars building up to speed. No one can pass till they get across the start-finish line. On board with Tommy Erdos. Lights are still red. Green and away they go. And Jason Plato has made a cracking start this time. He's not going to waste that pole position. Ivan Muller is trying to do something about it but can't. So it's Plato, then it's Muller, then it's Thompson. A little bit of a touch there from his teammate Bennett. Erdos right behind. Huge gaggle of cars just streaming down the hill. Mercifully, everyone through cleanly, it appears. Shedden made a good start as well, and the lead production car. Plenty of those apex markers getting knocked off by the field first time around. Up through Clark. Plato's still in the lead. Running very wide there. Once again, Steve Soapy using all of the grass and more to get through. Huge field of production cars now. Muller's having a run round the outside. What can he do? Can he cut back on Plato? Plato takes the racing line. Muller still sticks in tight as well. Four voxels in the lead. Tom Boardman in the pink Peugeot. He's off. Well, there'll be all the contact we saw in the sprint race. That's the result of Bottom Wishman on the left-hand side. Wheel cocked to wherever you want to call it. Up the hill for the first time now. Colin Blair. Contact there. That's Colin Blair off sideways, and he's off. That's a very big off. And if you want to see a car going at 100 miles an hour in reverse, there you've seen it. Colin Blair spins, rolls, ends up on his side. Now he's parked there right on the crest of the hill. Marshall's running straight to him. I hope he's fine. That's the view from Ivan Muller, meantime. There's a little bit of contact with him, him and Jason Plato. Plato just cuts back. Now James Thompson moves in. Just trying to get passed down into McIntyre's and it didn't work. Now Muller's coming under some very big pressure from Phil Bennett as well. Bennett all over the back of Ivan Muller, which is not what you would expect to see down the back straight. Plato, Thompson, then Muller. Bennett right behind him. We're coming down into the hairpin. Bennett's moved to the right-hand side of Muller. Muller is defending. Now James Thompson as well is trying to run around the outside of Plato. Is that an opportunity for Muller? I don't think so. Muller holds the inside line. Now Bennett moves in. There's the safety car. They're obviously backing up the field, stop everything while they get Colin Blair out of that car, still on its side. I assume he's fine. Let's get the car over and get the door open. It was pretty big contact in the rear. Ah, good stuff, he looks okay. But like, at least when it rolled, it had lost most of its energy. Yes, when it hit the tyre barrier, that dissipated a lot of the speed and the car then went into a series of slow rolls and uh, looks like Colin Blair's OK. Well, let's have another look. Coming up the hill. Yeah, there's contact with one of the Hondas. I think that might be Edwards. Tagged the rear of the car. They're very close together. At that point, then, all the energy shed. The tyres go everywhere. And it's just a matter of just going through the various tariffs of a roll. And Blair looks to be OK. Well, he's had a foul day because he was off in the first lap of race one. Now that, and as well as we saw during that replay, we also saw Tommy Erdos. His car is out as well. I don't know what the problem is. Parked up during these circulating laps under the safety car. That's been the end of him. Safety car is peeled off. That means we're about to start running again. As soon as we get across the strike, which we have now done, we are racing once again. Plato is in the lead. We're on board with James Thompson, hunting him down the hill. Ivan Muller in third. That is Phil Bennett in the second of the green and blue Vauxhalls trying to get in touch with Ivan Muller. Muller's coming under some real pressure. It's unusual Muller to be in this position. Normally he's pressurising Plato or he's leading. Suddenly the two egg.com Vauxhalls are all over him. And Shedden is all over those curbs as well. Once again leading production. I reckon Muller's got a real problem. Soper is starting to pressure the back. <laughs> Soper once again ploughing his own furrow out into the grass there. It seems to work for him, though. He seems to not lose very much speed, which is unusual. But Steve, he's been around a long time. Plenty of revs down there as he works down through the gears, through the hairpin, chasing Bennett up the hill. That's where they came to grief in the last race. You can just see how steep that hill is. A little bit of breathing space there for Plato. Thompson, or just a second behind him, then Muller, then Bennett. You can see how close it is on the timing. 
Down through Duffer's dip into McIntyre's. Muller trying to fight back, see what he can do. Can he get past James Thompson? All of this seems to be playing into Plato's hands. Plato has the lead, comfortable, clear air. All he's got to worry about is a quick pit stop, and this feature race is going to be his as well. Just see how hard they work. Watching Ivan Muller there just skipping over the curves and out onto the dirt. Soper as well again. He's just making a career out of going wide, coming out of Clarks. He's, on, he's, he's, he's actually playing on a completely different fairway from everybody else. Lap after lap up through Clark, runs wide, but it doesn't seem to cost him time. Look how close he is to the back of Phil Bennett's Vauxhall. Big drag up the hill. Now, I reckon if Van Muller must be having some sort of a problem, he's falling way back behind James Thompson now and is really having to work to hold off Phil Bennett. No, he's not anymore. Phil is through. That all went wrong as they came out of the heaven bend. He didn't have the momentum. Bennett did. But as you're right, Charlie, there's something wrong with Muller's Vauxhall at the minute. Yeah, he must be working really, really hard. Just falling back, still circulating. But that's an opportunity for everybody else. Yeah, look, very slow over there. And even now, Steve Super is able to pull out and pass without any difficulty whatsoever. Well, that's disappointing. These touring cars are dropping like flies this afternoon. Great opportunity for the production guys to make some sort of a dent into that. Remember, the touring cars will be making pit stops during this race. The production cars will not. Now, here's the Muller view. He's still running. He ain't dead yet. That's Soper to the left of us. What can Muller do? Running down the inside into the hairpin, takes him back again. Don't write him off. No, but as you can see, I think just the problem is in the corner again. Super gets out alongside. It's just a drag race all the way down to Duffer's corner. And Soper's got the line. No way he's going to let that go. A little bit of a wiggle there for Muller. But Soper's got it covered. That car is not handling happily. No, and I don't think Muller's terribly happy either. The body language of the car, I'm sure, is mirroring precisely what Muller's feeling right now. And I'll not tell you what it is. Down through Butchers. Once again, very pedestrian. Ivan Muller is just circulating now. He's not doing the job. Big problem. It just looks as if he's just not able to manhandle the car. Normally, Muller's got this thing dancing everywhere. Now it's plodding its way around the track. Yeah, he's buttoned off altogether. I reckon he'll pit this lap, probably. Just crawling around. Now, it's very disappointing for him because he worked very hard in race one and of course ultimately Jason Plato drove brilliantly and muscled his way back past Ivan yeah he does go into the pits you can see he's been crawling yeah and also you can just see there's some kind of smoke or something coming from the bottom of the car now whether that's the problem or just an auxiliary problem well this isn't the scheduled pit stop no but I think the teams just go through the motions of changing the front tyres they'll take the strip off but I think they're going to spend a bit more time looking at this car yep up comes the bonnet well, it just goes to show, meantime, back with the production men who are never dull. That is Simon Harrison and James Kay tasting each other's cars as they drive up the hill. Graves just in front of them, so it's Graves in the first silver Honda, then it's Kay, then it's Harrison in that red Peugeot. Now, Simon Harrison and Kay, they have been at it hammer and tongs all afternoon. Remember in race one, banging panels as they came out of that hairpin together. Now they're doing it again. Very close racing, neither of them giving any quarter whatsoever, and this is helping Graves. Well, all he has to do is keep an eye on his mirror to make sure they don't get any nearer than they are, but he has to keep an eye out for Shedden, who's actually leading the class at this minute. Yeah, he's driving a pretty good race, isn't he? Very impressive indeed. How bad luck Muller's out. That was staying, fellas. So I tried during three laps to, um, to carry on, but uh, when the power steering goes off, it's impossible to turn. If it will be five laps to the end, OK, but uh, 20 and something laps to the end is no, no way. Now, hang on. I'm finding this baffling, actually. There are so few touring cars left out there. Even if he circulated at 40 miles an hour and finished, he'd pick up points. I don't get it. Well, at least he didn't take his boosts off and run away, did he? <laughs> Fair enough. Anyway, I'm sure these things, are, as we watch James Thompson coming into the pits now, as I was saying, I'm sure these things are almost impossible to drive without power steering, but I can't imagine he couldn't have inched around somehow. I agree with you, but this Thompson, his one and only stop of the afternoon. Thompson wants to get in and out quickly, but this is not happening. 10, 11, well, 11 seconds, that's very poor indeed, and Thompson will be not very happy. Well, this bloke will be delighted, though. Jason Plato looking to consolidate his lead. He needs some really quick laps now. 
He's holding the lead so far, but he needs to be dynamite quick, build up enough of a buffer in time for his pit stop. He's still got the bright day glow strip under his name on the windscreen. Side of the car there, which shows he has not pitted yet. James Thompson once again opting for an early stop. Well, Plato peels off at the very last moment, dives into the pit lane, so this is going to be crucial. All the lead box all comes to a standstill. Wheel perfect, stops right on the button. Wheels off, wheels on, watch the clock on the left-hand side. Seven, 7.3 7 seconds, a lot, that's 4.3 seconds quicker than Thompson. He'll be delighted with that. Yeah, there's a big help. There's James Thompson coming up the hill, and there is Jason Plato going down the hill. He's really given himself a huge margin there. He'd be disappointed, though, to come out behind that Honda. He'll want to get past. He has. That's in McIntyre. Well, he'll think he's seeing double. He pitted behind one Honda and has come out behind the identical team car. But a very helpful Annie Templeton. Off again. She's having a rotten day. Yes, it is. But here's the second of the egg box holes. Phil Bennett, remember, 11 seconds for his teammate, James Thompson. Six, seven, seven seconds exactly. And that's going to put Bennett, I believe, ahead of Thompson if he gets out of the pit lane in time. Well, let's see how it washes through. Here is James Thompson coming up and over the start-finish line. And out comes Bennett, weaving to get the little bit of heat into the front of those tyres, but he's in front. He's going to be a happy little camper ahead of Thompson and on merit. Now, lots of work for James Thompson to do if he can get that place back again. Great shot of him soaring away at the wheel here. Look how busy they are on this circuit. Very hard work circuit, a high work rate for the drivers. Concentration at a premium. No prizes for guessing he was coming down into the hairpin there, all the way down through the gears. And he'll not be happy at the thought of looking at the back of his teammates Foxall as they come up over the hill. But I'll tell you what, it's hoving into view. It's much closer than it was a lap ago. He's starting to make some real inroads on Phil Bennett. Bennett probably a little bit cautious on those new tyres, not wanting to make a mistake. Thompson's up to temperature and up to speed. Now, all these pit stops, of course, mean that Steve Soper, who has yet to pit in the Peugeot, is now our race leader. Now, hang on, that Thompson's off. He's gone straight across. I've got a problem with the car. I don't know what it is. How steering's gone. Well, it's really alarming for James Thompson. Here's a replay. Look what happened. Yes, and when he, he realized something went wrong there very quickly, we actually saw the brake lights come on before he went off. A big fight for James. Well, he's really got some work to do. I tell you what, because we've already seen a Van Muller retire with this problem. Now, look, he, almost as if he's trying to get himself comfortable here to muscle this car around. Well, what he needs to do now is steer the car really from his shoulders, not his arms. Front-wheel drive without power steering, it's a nightmare. Well, look at it fighting back. Look at that quick grab of the gear stick, that hand straight back on the wheel again. Believe me, the weight in the steering now is a real workout. See, you can see even under his helmet, his brows furrowed, he's working so hard whether or not he continues with it. Now, in the production ranks, there's Simon Graves, still having this race-long battle with Gordon Shedden in that Ford Focus as they drag up the hill. Just in the distance, you can see Graves' teammate, James Kay, and he is continuing his race-long battle with Simon Harrison in the Peugeot. Down into Duffer's dip. There's James Kay, lights ablaze. Then that red Peugeot right behind him. Now, here's race leader, Steve Soper, in the touring car Peugeot, the 406. Jumps the curbs up the hill and into the pits, last man in. Yes, and a very long way into the race, of course. Soper will get that extra point for leading in the feature race. Brings the Peugeot 406 coupe. The Peugeot guys go to work. Let's see what they can do. We've seen a seven-second stop from Phil Bennett. That was the quickest of the Vauxhalls. Stripped off. Dan Eves is holding that strip. Well done, Dan. You got three out of three this weekend. But there's a problem there. Front, come on, guys. Get that wheel nut on. Oh, this is, a driver sits in the car. He's going absolutely mad. Hurry up. Steve Super. Well, I've had a wicked weekend this weekend so far. And this is just about 23.2 seconds. And he almost loses the engine on acceleration. <laughs> Dan Eves bringing his own particular brand of good luck to that pit stop. Got unlucky in race one when he went off, and that was a terrible pit stop with that problem. Now, Graves is really bringing Shedden under 
real pressure now, meantime, in the production battle. Shedden in the focus, Graves turns in, and he's nailed him! Really big hit going into the hairpin. Shedden's still running, so is Graves. Graves as well, that's one way to get through. Uh, it was a bit basic and a bit crude, but it's effective. Uh, but look, at there's the damage. Graves' car, that's going to not make it very far down this road. Uh, you'd have to say Graves is a bit unlucky there, though. I mean, it was quite a late cut from Shedden. Yeah, but you have to say also that Shedden probably found reverse gear and not second gear. Well, it hasn't worked, and Graves is off. Unbelievable. Down into Duffer's dip. Keep it rolling, son. Keep it rolling. Toes half the track back on with him. Kitty litter all over it. Down through Duffer's dip. Still 38 tonnes of gravel as he turns right into McIntyre's as well. Now, here's the first bit of contact. Well, I think Graves just took a bit of a punt down the inside. Shedden did cover it, but unfortunately, too much speed from the Honda and a Ford Focus too close to avoid. Well, seen in much action, that hairpin at Knock Hill. No exception today. Meantime, Jason Plato is starting to make this look very easy, leading this race outright in the touring car. Daylight back between him and Phil Bennett in second place. There is Bennett. Might be daylight, but headlights ablaze as he comes up behind Rob Cullard in the Renault Clio. There's Bennett, P2, not much chance of catching Plato, he's red hot today. Oh, and rotten luck, Graves is in. Well, we got quite close to him and had a go down the inside, uh, committed himself firmly down the inside and he, he moved over very late and it was going a lot, lot slower to me. And, and he just breaks in the middle of the corner and uh, couldn't do nothing but hit him, you know, just on the entrance of the corner he just uh, pulled over very, very late and just sat there, you know, so there was nothing I could do, I was already committed to uh, making the pass. Well, he drove well all day, and I reckon old Graves can consider himself very, very unfortunate indeed. Phil Bennett, he's feeling pretty fortunate indeed because he's up into second position. A couple have dropped away, but he's driving a stormer of a race. Yeah, no. Okay, Phil, keep going, keep going. You've got a big gap behind you, keep going. A big gap in front of him as well because if Jason Plato has pulled so far off into the distance, that is the third car power steering failure. This is a tough old circuit. I think it's all the curb hopping that we see at Knock Hill in spite of those marker pulls on the corners to try and reduce it. It's happening. Well, we're on the last lap, so he should be able to limp home from here. But I can't help thinking that with so few touring cars now running, Ivan Muller must be kicking himself that he at least didn't sort of crawl around at 40 miles an hour and finish in the points. Well, there are points down to 10th place, and I can't believe Muller would have finished as low as 10th in spite of having no power steering. Yeah, really big surprise. James Thompson, meantime, has been soaring away for at least half this race distance. And he's in third place. Yeah, so he's picking up valuable points. Jason Plato, as we watch him come down into the hairpin for the last time, has had an absolutely stunning day. Two poles, and he's looking at two wins. You can't get better than that. Well, the only thing he didn't win this weekend was at goal. Oh, you had to spoil it, didn't you? Terrific Jason Plato. Up to take the chequered flag. Lovely stuff, sunshine. And Phil Bennett, lights flashing as he comes up the hill. I don't know if that's in jubilation or relief. It'll be a relief for James Thompson in third place. Great drive without any power steering this afternoon. Well, they might feel cause for celebration, but it'll be difficult for any of them to lift a glass in celebration. They'll all have such tired arms from racing without power steering. Plato, Bennett and Thompson. Bennett and Thompson limping home with wounded cars. Shedden leading the production ranks. Great drive for him on his debut. James Kay, second place, Harrison and Collard. <laughs> It's always been a bit of a bogey circuit for me, this. And, uh, you know, the record's been put straight now. We've had an absolute maximum score. Tough luck for a van, but, you know, we're all equal now on the no fifth finishes. He's had two, I've had, no, I've had two, and now it's all to play for. It was fantastic, especially after the outcome of the sprint race where we were doing a bit of a rally cross. And now uh, P2, happy days. Well, we said at the start of the feature race it was tight at the top and it's even tighter now. Have a look at that. Plato just in front of Muller, Thompson not far behind and Phil Bennett in touch too. Vauxhall leading the team's championship and not surprisingly, they've taken out the Manufacturers' Cup. Isn't that fantastic? So early in the year. And I tell you, it's down to these guys, Derek and Ian, and everybody out there, the drivers, and everybody at Vauxhall so happy about this. And it's a tremendous fillet for us. They've done a fabulous job, and the cars have been generally very reliable, good racing. <laughs> oh, He's a nice I think, I think I'm in love with him. <laughs> Oh, it's beautiful to watch. Still very tight at the top of the Drivers' Championship for production as well. Kay and Harrison, they swap paint on the track and they're so close in the points. And a great day for the Ford Focuses. They even lead the production team's championship. After the 
going so well in the sprint race and just kind of bending the steering, hitting the kerbs too hard and finishing second, I was really, really up for it for the feature race. Learned at last how to conserve these tyres and just kind of kept the times consistent uh, and oh, what a feeling to win a feature race my first time out in a touring car. It's just absolutely unbelievable, really good. Hopefully I can do it again sometime. Well, I told you, this place never fails to surprise. We've come away with a new championship leader, brilliant racing, although it didn't rain. A couple of spots, but it didn't rain. Next time out, it could not be more different. We're going to be racing under lights, and we're back at sea level, because we'll be at Snetterton in Norfolk. Box.